Okay. Okay, here comes the poll. Assume everybody's seen it. Hmm. There we go. Now it's happening. <laughs> A little delayed reaction there. Okay. Given another minute, I guess. We have Five out of 12, so about not quite 50% have responded. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Well, so far, most everyone's from Washington State, have a few from Oregon, which is great. Welcome. Um, some East Coast people, and this one's a, another country, but I don't know where. It doesn't say so. Um, In the chat, Jeannie, they said they're from Mexico. Oh, thank you. I didn't see yeah. that. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Welcome. And a lot of people from Whidbey and Tacoma. And maybe if there's any other in the chat, you might, you might take a look at that. Most about well, it's kind of a split group. We got mostly people that have been here before, but as some, but but quite a few new ones. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll then at this point. Everybody okay with that? You got your answers in? Yes. Okay. I'm going to end the poll. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Okay. Um, so now I'm really excited to introduce um, again Ali Hudek, who is education coordinator. Um, for Sound Water Stewards. Um, and she has a very fun, we got a little preview, very fun presentation for you guys all. Um, so again, if everybody could just make sure you're on mute and Q&A, um, any questions in the chat? Um, Allie, you can go ahead. Thank you very much. Let me share my screen with you guys. All right, are you seeing that? Did I hear what happened? Oh, sorry, that was me. Oh, okay, are we good? <laughs> That's me, sorry. Okay, go All ahead. Right. Well, welcome everyone. So like they said, I'm Ali Hudek. I work for Soundwater Stewards of Island County and we are a group that is here in Island County and we're mostly volunteers. There's only three of us on staff and the rest is volunteers and we do education projects like this. We do a lot of community science and we do stewardship as well. So things like litter cleanups. And we have a couple hundred people all over Island County working really hard to help the Salish Sea. If you're interested in more, uh, we have a website that you can check out. But today we're gonna talk about superstars. Whoop, too fast, go back. All right, so first I would like to know what you all know about sea stars. So if you could raise your hand or put something in the chat, I'd just love to know what you know about these. Looks like Maya and Sasha. Say something. Um, I know that when they, I know that when they lose their limbs, they can regenerate. Yes, very good. And we'll talk a lot about that today. Their stomach is also, or their mouth is also their butt. Yeah, yes. <laughs> There's only one in and out. So, yep, that's another thing to remember. Same with the sea anemones. So careful where you're poking those guys. Looks like uh, Charlie. I heard like there's a disease with sea stars. Yes, that's you guys know quite a bit about this. Yeah, so there is a disease going around, um, sea star wasting, and 
uh, we're seeing some signs of hope with that. And we can talk a little bit about that more in the presentation. But that's great that you know about that. Very knowledgeable group of kids here. Uh, Wesley? Uh, I didn't like for a sec. I didn't know if I was unmuted. Um, I know that their mouth is on the bottom of them, unlike it's on the top of them. Yeah, so, right in the middle of the bottom. Yep, very good. Very good. Uh, Griffin. Um, uh, I also know, like, building on Wes's, or, uh, Wesley's thing, um, uh, I, like, they can, they can, like, put their stomach, like, they can put their stomach out of their body or something. Yeah, very good. They have a very interesting idea of table manners, don't they? So they eat very differently than we do. All right, uh. Is it Waka? Yeah, sorry, my camera. Um, but sea stars, uh, there was, oh I don't know, this is really hard to adjust. Uh, sea stars, they, um, they, if you cut off a, uh, like one of their body parts, it would turn into a whole nother steep, uh, sea star, and so when fishermen were trying to get rid of sea stars, uh, because they were eating, uh, oyster fishermen were trying to get rid of the sea stars, because they were eating oysters, they had chopped off parts of the sea stars, but all that did was make the problem bigger. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's a story that I heard growing up, too. That's interesting. When I heard it, it was a uh, sponge fisherman, but same story. I wonder if it happened a few times. It probably has. All right. How about anybody else? Or is that, is there anything in the chat? I can't see the chat. Not seeing anything else in the chat. Okay. Well, great. It seems like this is a very knowledgeable group of kids. That's amazing. All right. Well, let's talk about, oh, what they are. So what is a sea star anyway? So the common name is sea star or starfish. And you know they're called starfish, but they're not actually fish. Kind of like a jellyfish is not actually a fish. But interesting, uh, interestingly, uh, interestingly enough, a seahorse is a type of fish, which I always think is kind of weird. Uh, the scientific name is Astroidea. Now, if you break that down into the Latin, it sounds complicated, but aster means star and dios means appearance. So literally, astroidea means star looking things, which makes sense, right? We have uh, the type is an invertebrate, which means it doesn't have what? Anybody know? Yeah, it doesn't have a backbone. That's right. So it does not have a backbone and its skeletal system is on the outside. It has an exoskeleton. It is a carnivore, so that's kind of cool. A lot of times you think of a carnivore as like a bear or a lion, that kind of thing, but these guys are carnivores, so they are meat eaters, even though they don't really have teeth, like we'd recognize a land mammal that's a carnivore having teeth. Um, but they would be pretty terrifying if you were a sea snail. Uh, their lifespan, they can live up to 35 years, which is pretty cool for a sea creature. And they can be up to 11 pounds, which would be a massive sea star. So we'll watch a quick video. This is one we did in Langley. Hi, you guys. This is Allie with Soundwater Streets of Island County, and I'm here today at the Langley Marina to talk to you about sea stars. Now, if you've been around here many years like I have, you'll notice that you don't see them like you used to, and that's because of something called wasting disease that took quite a toll on their population. We do, however, know that there is a population here at the Langley Marina, thanks to Tabitha, our Woodby coordinator, who also happens to be a paddle guide down here at Woodby Island Kayak. So she observed some healthy specimens down here, and she volunteered to go diving with us, along with her husband, Joe, to go ahead and see what we can find. Let's see what they got. Oh, honey. There he goes. Oh, this is amazing. Okay. 
what we have here today is a beautiful little pisaster. And what you're gonna see here is that he has one arm that's shorter than the other arm. Now, the reason for that is that if these guys are under attack, they will actually shed an arm in order to get away and regrow that arm. Now, one of the coolest things about these is that if that arm comes off and it happens to have part of the central nerve cluster, which is located here in the central disc area, it will actually regrow a new sea star. Sea stars are a type of echinoderm, a name that literally means spiny skin. They're in the same family as sand dollars, urchins, and sea cucumbers. Sea stars have a central disc surrounded by rays or arms, so they're in the class Astroidea. If you break that down, it's aster, meaning star, and eidos, meaning appearance. So basically, scientists classified them as star-looking things. Instead of a cardiovascular system that uses blood like ours, they have what's called a water vascular system. This is made up of a single opening called a madreporite and canals that feed water down its legs and into each tube foot. Each foot has a small balloon shaped area on top that the sea star can contract, pushing water into the tube foot to extend it. The foot is then controlled by a muscle to provide movement and contains special cells that help stick and unstick the foot from surfaces. The amount of coordination required to move on so many feet is especially impressive when you consider that the sea star has no brain. Instead, they have a circle of nerves located at the disc that runs down each arm, much like their water vascular system. This led people for many years to believe they were hardly animals at all and more like a plant than like us, but we're finding this is far from true. They actually have complex, albeit slow, social interactions. Sea stars are benthic animals, which means they spend their life on the ocean's floor. As they go along the bottom, they're looking for things like shellfish to eat, and once they find them, they use their tube feet to pull them open to digest. This one has found a screwdriver, which it's finding is not edible, but let's take a look at a little more successful hunt. What you're seeing here is a sunflower star in pursuit of a snail in the right-hand corner of the screen. This is probably the slowest hunt you'll ever see, but here we go. Well, it looks like he's got a pretty good grip on him now, so that's a bad day for the snail, but a great meal for that sea star. What it's doing now is actually pulling the snail underneath the central disc, where it will eject its stomach to partially digest its meal. It'll then pull it all back inside to finish the process. As you can tell, these feet are very important for the sea star's life and survival. If you see them at low tide and they're attached to something solid like a rock or a pier and you try to remove them, you may damage those feet, causing the sea star a lot of trouble. I hope you've learned something about these incredible animals today. I've definitely learned that flounders are the best photo bombers when you're doing underwater photography. And I feel like maybe they wanna be in the next video. If you guys have any suggestions or questions, please email education at soundwaterstewards.org and visit us on the web. You guys Thank you so much for joining arms us. Sticking out there. Right in the middle. So there you go. That is Sea Stars 101. That's a lot of information all at once. So we'll kind of break that down for you a little bit here in the presentation. And one thing we didn't talk about in that video was the fact that they start life as plankton. So if you have any idea what plankton is, if you know about plankton, can you raise your hand in the... Yeah. So a lot of you seem to know what plankton is. That's great. And we'll talk a little bit about plankton in a second here. But this is actually a picture of a baby sea star. So this is what a sea star plankton looks like when it's floating around in the water. Now, most sea stars start this way, but not all of them. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. 
but I want you to remember what that looks like. And now let's talk about plankton. Um, so this video is actually going to show you how we collect plankton to look at it. And Soundwater Spurs does this as a project. And what we're doing is we're looking for harmful plankton, not sea stars. We're looking for plankton that will make you very sick if you eat them. And the reason we do that is so that we don't harvest shellfish that will make us sick. And what we're looking at here is a plankton net. So as Trent in the photo here is pulling this net up, you'll see the water comes out through the net and then it's all collected into a little cup at the bottom. And there you can see the plankton stuck to the net. You see them all in there? It's crazy, there's thousands of them in there. And then he takes this little, little bucket off the bottom and you gotta shake it up or they stick to the side. They don't wanna come out. And when you pour them out, they look like this just little puffy clouds kind of floating around in the water. And we actually take that sample to the lab and this is what we see. So you'll look in there and it looks like there's baby sea stars in there, doesn't it? Up here at the top, looks like two baby sea stars. That's what I thought those were at first. I was totally wrong. You, you can tell that that doesn't look anything like the baby sea star in the last slide. Those are actually little sticks. They look like little tiny sticks and they're stuck together in that shape. You also see in this an egg that round big one there in the middle, that's actually an egg of some sort of sea creature. And the sea stars do start like that before they hatch out into the plankton stage. And the other cool ones in this, I really, I love these. They look like little Oreo cookies, don't they? Kind of floating around everywhere. Those are little diatoms and those are really, really important for the Salish Sea. And we see a lot of those when we pull our plankton net. So that's just a little bit about how they start their life. And once they get enough food and they start to grow, they actually sink to the bottom and they become benthic animals. And we talked in the video about what that means. A benthic animal lives on the bottom of the ocean and crawls along the floor. And in the case of sea stars, up pilings and things like that, but they tend to hang out at the bottom. And so they'll sink to the bottom and they'll become little baby sea stars. And that's what you're looking at here. Um, this guy, is sitting on a blade of grass, of seagrass. So that's how small that cute little baby sea star is. Oh, good job, Maya and Sasha. <laughs> yep, should I give it away? I don't know how this works. Anyway. <laughs> yep, there's the little octopus. And just to let you know, they are really good at hiding. So that's a great animal to hide in a slideshow. All right, so that's great. Sea stars are awesome, but what makes them super? Today's theme is superheroes and what makes sea stars so incredible. And I've picked kind of three, three categories that I think these guys are awesome at. And the first one would be regeneration power. So a lot of you kids already knew that they can regrow an arm and that kind of thing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. They can climb up walls like Spider-Man. So you've got these crazy little tube feet that are all sticky on the ends. And then they have strong shields on the outside. I love this image. I have no idea what those little urchins are trying to do there, but he's got a lot of urchins on him in that far right photo. All right, so first we're gonna talk about regeneration and cloning. So we talked about the fact that most of them begin life as plankton, not all of them do. They can actually clone themselves. So I have the uh, Star Wars reference here because they had to work really hard to make Clone Wars, right? Sea stars, not a problem. They can literally just pull their own arm off and boom, there's a clone. So they're, they're made for it. It's pretty incredible. They can also lose an arm to get rid of a predator. So if they're being attacked, they can let go of that arm and give it to the crab or whatever and be like, I'm out and go the other direction and they can grow that arm back. And that's what you're seeing in this top photo. It's got that teeny tiny arm there. It's growing it back. And if the arm that came off survives and it has enough of that nerve cluster we talked about in the video, it will actually grow another starfish that will be the clone of the first one. This photo I really like, I have no idea why, but he there's three legs left and you can see these tiny little buds starting of the two other legs, which is pretty cool. That was taken, I think this photo was taken in right off of Freeland Park. All right, their other superpower, their crazy wiggly little tube feet. I love these things. So we talked in the video about each tube foot having a little pocket of water underneath, and then it squishes that pocket of water, which extends the foot out. 
and then it can open that little pocket and it sucks all the water out of the foot and makes the foot go up inside. And each foot is controlled by its own little set of muscles. So there's actually no pattern here. They're not, the feet aren't working together. They're kind of just randomly going where they want to go. And the cool thing is, is not only do these things allow them to stick to the walls and things like that, but these little ones on the tip, you'll see at the tip of this one as it goes up and there's a good close up right here. These ones are kind of just waving around in the water, right? They're not really helping it to walk. And that's because they're also used as a sensor. So it's actually sniffing the water with those two feet, looking for a delicious snail or crab or whatever to eat. There you can see those little wiggly ones on the tip really well in that shot. So not only are these used for locomotion to get them to move, but they're also used to sense things in the water. Now they also have on the end of each ray, a light sensor. So they don't have eyes like we do. They don't see the world in the same way that we do, but they do sense light and dark. And those are located on the ends of each of the rays. All right, their exoskeleton. So Iron Man would have had to work really hard to make his exoskeleton, right? Not these guys, they're born with it. Well, not really, because they're plankton, but they develop it very early in their lives. So their skeleton on the outside is very, very hard. And this is because they need that to protect them from predators. So in these videos, you'll see two shrimp trying to get a meal out of the sea star, and they're not able to get through that hard outer shell. Now, if you think about it, the sea star wants to stay on the ocean's floor because underneath the sea star is this soft underbelly part that's not as protected. So their goal is to stay stuck flat and use that shield on their back to protect them. And the other thing, this picture of the seagull trying to eat the sea star, because it's such a rigid shell, as long as that sea star doesn't relax and it stays nice and strong, that seagull has no chance of actually swallowing it. So that's its other strategy is to be too big and solid to be eaten by a predator like a seagull. All right, last but not least, these little guys have water in their veins. So we have blood, right, that goes through our body. Our heart pumps it and it moves oxygen through our bodies. They don't have any blood. They just have water running around in their body. And that would be a huge advantage because if they lose their, what would be the equivalent of their blood, like if we bleed a lot, we get into some trouble. They have basically the salt water they need all around them. And they will put it right through, you see this little thing that looks like a button? on top of the sea star, that's the piece called the madreporite. And it looks like a little grate, like a straighter. And the water goes through there and through this little circle and then out each ray. And it also goes into those tube feet. So the little pocket of water that makes their feet wiggle, that's where it gets the water for those. So their salt water blood that they use or their salt water in their veins is uh, transportation it helps their little feet move. It also transports food and waste. So it helps with their digestion and it helps control respiration. So it's gonna pull the oxygen through their bodies just like our blood does. All right, so how do they fit into the food web? We talked about them being carnivores and I love this picture on the left. This was taken by one of our volunteers that swims out along the coast or along the shoreline of Woodby Island. And she found this little sea star. And not only is this little sea star eating one actively right now, that's like right where his stomach is. He's probably got his stomach ejected into that snail, but he's got how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on deck. So he's feeling pretty greedy today. And he's got all these kind of in his arms. And when he's ready for the next one, he'll let this one go and then start pulling these ones in towards the mouth. So this one's got a couple to-go meals with him as well as the one he's enjoying at the moment. And so they'll eat things like snails, but they'll also eat things like clams and oysters and mussels. And to open those, they actually use those crazy sticky feet and they latch on and they pull super hard and they actually open those shellfish. If you've ever tried to open a clam, it's not easy, but they can do it with those feet. They're really strong. And then as soon as they get it open enough, they'll eject that stomach into the, into the clam or whatever they're eating and they'll start to digest it. Um, and as great of a predator as they are, they're also prey. So this is a picture of a sea otter. 
Uh, we don't have sea otters so much on Woodby Island. We do have river otters here. So if you see an otter here, it's likely a river otter. Although these are making a comeback, so who knows? Fingers crossed. But these are predators for them. Uh, obviously, you saw the seagull trying to swallow one. That would be a predator for them, as well as things like clam or uh, crabs and some types of shrimp. All right, so what are some common Salish sea stars? I've got four different ones here that you can see at low tide um, here on Whidbey Island. These were all taken here. So the sunflower star would be number one. We looked at one in the video that was in the Langley Marina. That was a little one. That sea star in that video is probably only like this big. It was pretty small. Um, but those ones get really big out here. Uh, the okra stars, that's the one with two star, there's sea stars there in the top. Those ones come in all sorts of different colors. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, these two were the most affected by that disease that we talked about a little bit, the wasting disease. But we do see populations coming back and then fading and coming back. So we do have hope that they're going to recover from this. And we're seeing it's kind of like a pulse of an area will come back and then they'll get sick, but then they'll come back. So there's quite a bit of hope with that. But those are the two stars most affected by that, as far as I can tell. We've got the blood star down at the bottom. If that name wasn't enough, there's a type of blood star called an armpit star, which I just think is so mean. Like, what did that sea star do to the biologist to get that name, right? That's terrible. And then there's the leather stars down at the bottom. Can you guys raise your hand if you've seen these on the beach? Any of these ones? Yes, a couple. Nice. All right, the blood stars, you can see a lot of those down at Fort Eby, if you're ever down there at low tide. And we've got some great low tides coming up that you can go explore. And we actually have a couple junior ranger programs coming up if you're interested in going on a beach walk with a naturalist and taking a look at some of these guys. All right, so that's it for me. And that brings us to Jeannie. Okay, thank you, Allie. That was fascinating. I learned a lot by listening to that. So Good. yeah, so Allie should have, um, do you have the... Um, Sorry, the, did you want the art one or the word one first? Um, the word one first. We're going to do the word. So everybody needs to get, Allie's going to put up the, everyone should have this one, I hope. It's going to be, uh, we got to do a little bit of educational stuff, even more before we get into the fun drawing stuff. But um, you should know the answers to all of these because she went over everything. So I called this one superstars because they're, they are pretty super. They've got some amazing uh, traits that they do that are unique to um, a lot of animals can't do the things that, that, a, super, that a star can, a sea star. So um, I've got a little word bank at the bottom down there for you. And we only have one, two, three, four. Um, words, but some of those words are kind of big, maybe not for some of you, it may be a little more challenge, challenging for others. But what I thought we might also do is, you notice there's no lines on this, no arrows directed to a specific part of the star, of the little starfish that I have in there. So maybe um, you might draw a line kind of indicating where that, that might be. So let's start with the first one where it says, it's on, on the left there, it says, eats by inserting its, starts with an S, ends in an H, into its prey. So what word would that be? I know you guys are going to know these because you guys are super smart and I know this is probably not going to be that hard. So at this point, I do like to let you guys have a chance to, to go ahead and talk because you've been so quiet and listening the whole time. And if anybody wants to share their answer, um, go ahead and let's hear. What, what do you think that is that they put into its prey to eat? How they do? What do they do? Stomach. Yeah. Awesome. Stomach. 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 Good. Good job. Ooh, can you imagine that? They'll push burping your stomach out and to eat, to eat something. That's, that's pretty, that's kind of a crazy superpower if you ask me. So keep these in mind. All right. All right. Let's go down to, that was correct. So let's go down to the lower left corner. It says, where's it's, and it has two little helps in there, a K and an O on the outside. And it's called an exoskeleton. So what is it? That they're wearing on the outside. Skeleton. Yeah, you guys are too smart. I got to make these harder. I'm going to make them harder next time. Very good. Skeleton. skeleton. So that's pretty cool to wear your skeleton on the outside of your body. Just the opposite of what we do, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's go to that one in the upper right hand corner. And it says can this is the biggest word, but I know I already know you guys are going to get this. It can what lost limbs? What Generate. what can it do? Regenerate. What? Regenerate. Oh, I am definitely making this part. Regenerate. Regenerate. That is so cool. And then also, though, I did pick up from listening to Allie that they can also clone, which is a little bit different than regeneration, right? Allie, it's because cloning is if they break off enough with the central disc that they can become another starfish as opposed to just growing or regenerating an arm, correct? Yeah, it's just a okay. new version of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple different, so that's cool. All right. All right, and the last one has many what or super strength? Tube feet. Tube feet. Those things are very strong. Tube feet. Little Tube feet. Super Tube muscles feet. for climbing walls. Yeah, all right. Well, I can see that that was, you breezed right through that. So now I'm really excited about the second part of our activity that I kind of like to share with you because I know you like to create things and draw things. So now this is the this is where you can make your superhero starfish. What characteristic is it going to be? That skeleton? Is it going to be those powerful uh, uh, tube feet? Um, the the external um, the the exoskeleton? What is it going to be? So maybe some of you have already done it, but and if you have, that's great. But let's give you like, I'm going to look at the clock and I'm going to say, let's do five minutes and work out something. And then we're going to share those that want to share can share. How's that sound? Okay. All right. Go to it. I can't wait to see what you're going to come up with. I'm interested well, to see what they use it for too. Well, I'm sorry. I'm interested to see what the superheroes would use their powers for. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we already got some up there. Let's see. Let's, let's uh, I saw Lillian, Claire and Willis. So let's see what you got there. Um, can we pin them? Let's see. Should I stop share? I think so at this point. That's yeah. Thanks, Allie. Okay. Yep, no problem. Okay. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, nice. Cool. That again. Could, could you hold it up again? I didn't see it. Did I pin them? Oh, nice. Does so that have superpowers? Is, what is your superpower? Did you, did you, did you just have fun making it or did you want to give it some, did you, what? We were just having fun with it? Um, it goes to rescue, like a, um, a car accident. Okay. Like an ambulance sea star. Very, very cool. Awesome. And then mine can, um, camouflage. Very good. Very good. That's so cool. Good job. Okay. We did have a couple of questions that while everybody else is working on their, their super C stars, um, maybe Allie could answer. Yeah. Um, so then we will have time too, if there's anybody who wanted to ask another question after the activity. Um, but in the chat, we had, uh, do starfish know how to avoid predators was asked by Addie. I believe they can smell some of them coming but they're not very good at it. They're very, very, very slow. So if it's, even if it's trying to run away, if it's a sea otter zipping through the water, um, their best defense is that exoskeleton for sure. Yeah. Very cool. And then uh, Maya and Sasha asks, um, why do sea stars have color, but people don't? Oh, well, that's a great question. A lot of, you know, a lot of animals come in all sorts of different shades. And you know, people do too, and it's beautiful. Lots of different kinds of sea stars. There's different strategies in the wild. So a lot of times you'll look at the color of an animal or the patterns on an animal and it'll help them blend into their environment. I'm not sure the sea stars like trying to do that since they pick like bright orange <laughs> and bright purple. So I'm not exactly sure why they are the colors that they are, but they're absolutely lovely. And then one last question in the chat was from Jazzy and she asked, how many legs do starfish have? Oh, that's a great question. Um, it can have a lot of legs like that sunflower star that we looked at that has, I mean, I don't even know if I counted all of those legs. Um, many, many, and then it can go down to one. Let's say you're a clone that was budded from one leg. It can just be you and your one leg. But most of sea stars will have five. 
And the cool thing is that you'll see that same pattern if you look at animals that are related to the sea star. So if you look at like the top of a sand dollar, it has the sea star pattern right there on the top because it's kind of the same kind of critter. They've just developed a different strategy for surviving. And same with the urchins. If you look at underneath their little spines, you can see that pattern too. Very cool. Yeah. I did Google it's for the colors because I was curious too. Yeah. And they said that it can actually scare off predators because it can be intimidating. So it's so bright. There and, uh, but they also are researching to see if it has to do with what they eat. Mm. Um, it's hard. So. To, we can't really ask them. So we're kind of just guessing nope. <laughs> on stuff like this. But yeah, that's a good point. A lot of times the brightly colored shell or whatever it tells predators don't touch it because a lot of times they're poisonous mm -hmm. yeah that's a great point yeah there are any more questions for for ellie if you want to see something that has lots of fun colors and stuff like that look for the nudibranchs or nudibranchs mm -hmm. yeah those are fabulous little things I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. Um, where, where do we think they get their pigment from? What they eat or just what's in their environment? That's a great question. I'm, I'm not sure. You got me on that one. I'll look it up and maybe we'll send a follow-up email on that. That would just be great. Yeah, who is this? I'm sorry, it just says Zoom. This is Sharon, and I've had the worst time of my life trying to get on here. I no. kept I kept forgetting to put the last eight on my secret number. And so anyway, I'm over here with a big superstar S. Love it. Good. There you go. I've been listening on my phone and and being on my picture because I couldn't figure out I'm electronically challenged I'm old so I couldn't figure out how to get my speaker on but I'm here now uh, I will shut up now no we're happy to have you I'll <laughs> I will follow up because now I'm curious too I've never had anyone ask me that before oh why well, maybe they just come with it like we do or get in the sun and change it whatever yeah who knows Looks like we have, it's why do they me, call them? It's Maya and Sasha, and oh, right. we want to show our drawings. Oh, love it. OK. Hey. I think your camera might be off. Oh, there we go. Let's see. Oh, you're muted. Okay. First, let's do mine. I tried to write. Oh. I tried to. So this says, this we'll walk. Repulse, um, but it's just superpower backwards. One of the superpowers is it can shoot spikes. This is his butt and mouth. And then um, it has food magnets where it like sucks it towards food and it also makes it faster. That is so cool. I love it. Food magnets are a great idea. I think I have some. That's great. Thank you, guys. How's everybody else doing? I know there must be more. Looks like a question. Why do they call them sea stars? Hmm? I guess, you know, they were always starfish um, growing up. I still have trouble not saying starfish. And I think it's fine to call them starfish, honestly. If you say it, everyone knows what you're talking about. And I don't get that worried about that. But I think the whole concept of them not being fish kind of was bothering people. So they changed it to sea stars. But they go by either name. I don't think they mind. And then why do starfish have water on their body? I guess they like to stay because they need that salt going through their body to do things like digest their food and move oxygen around. They're going to need to stay, stay in the water or at least 
be in the water most of the time. They do okay if they come out of the water, but if you do see one out of the water, just leave it alone because you don't want to put it back where it will dry out. And again, if you try to pull them off of the rocks and things like that, they're trying to hold tight to the rocks to keep some of that water inside and to protect their belly and it'll damage their feet if you do remove them from a hard surface like that. Uh, Charlie? I even saw a starfish when I was at the beach. You saw one? Oh, that's awesome. What, what kind was it? Do you know? It was like a reddish. A reddish? Was it little, like that big? A little bit bigger. A little bigger? If it was a bright red one, was it really bumpy or almost kind of smooth? I did, I forgot. Forgot. I'm guessing it was a bit bumpy. Little bumpy. Some of them are really bumpy, like you can't miss it. And then the blood stars are a little bumpy, but they're pretty smooth. Yeah, where did you see it? I saw it on the water and I saw I saw it moving. Too cool. Yeah, good eyes. Charlie? Um, I was wondering if I could share mine. Yeah, of course. Okay. Love it. Um, this is the one I made, and I call it a ninja star. I wrote that at the bottom. It, so this, this looks like a really deadly sword. It's actually like just rubber. Oh, okay. <laughs> he does not, she does not want to hurt anybody. So yeah. Um, and then this, I, the extra dark spots I just put in for like fun, but now it makes it look more freebie. So I'm happy with that. Looks it's great. beautiful. I love the mask too. That's awesome. Very good. Yeah. It's like Charlie and Andy. One time um, I went to Coopville on a field trip of a summer camp and I saw a bunch of sawfish on, um, a, on a pool next to the dock. Ah, that's a great area to see them. I've seen quite a few down there. If you're ever down at the wharf, um, sometimes on the weekends, we're down there with a camera that we drop in the water and you can come see what's down there. I love that. But, yeah, those were probably uh, okra stars or pisasters. Nice. Yeah, good eyes. Griffin? Uh, I'd like to show you mine. Okay. Looks, oh, there's your camera. Oh, switch camera. Oh, I think you got to back up just a little bit. Uh, hold on. I know that. Let oh. me just. This and camera. Okay. This is mine. Oh, nice. So what is what is the superpower? Uh, he has a really strong exoskeleton. Nice. I like the compact design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, mine. That honestly, in my opinion, mine looks kind of lame. No. I like it. Good colors too. I like the okay. emblem. I like that S on there. Super. That's cool. Superstar. It's got a logo. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Maya and Sasha. Hi. Okay, I want to show mine. Um, and then I stop, stop. That I didn't show you that. Okay, this is my starfish. And it's Ooh. related to Encanto. So if you haven't watched Encanto, you probably won't know that what this is. I like the drawings, so it's great. Yeah. Well, tell us about it. What is it? Okay. It's super power. It's shape shifting, like Camilo. It has an arepa. It's a shape shift part of its body. 
It, it has a rip of con queso for Kalita and it poops bits and pieces for Bruno. <laughs> and then it has flowers and weight and glasses for Mirabelle. Uh, and leather inside the glasses for Peppa. And ears for Dolores and frowny faces for the guys who don't have powers. That's Wait, hold on. Right. Um, I also have a thing that I didn't show you yet. Of the food that yet attracts the sea star towards food. I yes, literally saw this the way through. And then, um, I can okay. get through anything an exoskeleton. Those are great. The food Love magnet it. is a popular idea today. <laughs> Lots of imagination going on here today. Yes. Yep. Okay, are there, let's see, any more? How is it? Yeah. I like your background, Jeannie. Oh, thanks. That's my little, I was um, in a meeting and I was thinking about sea stars, so I was just drawing one day. <laughs> nice. It's for fun. Thank you. Yeah. They're like, they look like they're like coming around my head and gonna hope they don't, don't pop their stomachs out and try to eat me. <laughs> yeah, look out. Okay, everybody share that, got it, that one, did, did everybody get a chance to share that wanted to? I never. I'd like to share one last time. Go ahead. I live by Redondo and I wonder if any of the other kids have been down to the marina, uh, not the marina, but the marine center there where you can go in and touch the sea stars. They have a big, a big in all kinds of stuff in there, an octopus, and it's all free on Saturdays. Where is that? It's in Redondo, in Des Moines, on Redondo Beach. Oh. On, on Poverty Bay, it's kind of by Kent and Federal Way and Marine Normandy Park, Des Moines, South Seattle. I uh, live on the beach and I used to be able to count thousands of starfish on my walk wow. to Redondo. And now I rarely see, it's just tragic, a one. And if we do, they're way under the rocks and we're real careful about them. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that's the um, the Mass Science Center. That's part of right, our, uh, exactly. Yeah, we're in a collaborative with them. Another great place that's a little more local would be the Marine Science Center over in Port Townsend, and I know a lot of times they have the sea stars too. Okay. So just... This is my starfish. Ooh. Oh, how beautiful! Ooh. Superpower. Uh, fend defending off predators. It's fending off the predator. Very oh, nice. <laughs> Good work. Beautiful. Very cool. Good job. Thank you. Very talented kids in this group. Okay. I think Jazzy wanted to share her C star. Yeah. Yeah, Jazzy. I'm not really done yet. Anybody else want to share or any other questions? If you guys want to send me pictures of your pictures, I can put them on our website too, if you want to be featured. Well, I'd like Janie to send us all a picture of that drawing she did behind her. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can do that. That is fabulous. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Allie, would you want to put your email in the chat? I am. They wanted us awesome. Typing and I see Eric wanted to shout too. Okay, Eric. Let me, let me, I'm going to pin you so I can, let's see. Okay. Why don't you tell us about that? Whoa, look at those, look right. at those hooks on those arms, the legs. That looks cool. What are those for? Muscles. <laughs> I can't see it. Where is it? Yeah, I'm not seeing Eric. Some 
I'm not. <laughs> yeah. right. He's like flexing, That's flexing scary. his muscles. <laughs> Very cool. I like it. Oh, I can't oh, see the it. words on there. Oh, strong, part. strong, Patrick. Did you give him abs? Is that what is that what's by his stomach? <laughs> oh, awesome. awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> so much creativity. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I just want to thank all of you for diving in and trying that uh, little piece of superstar art, really that. That was, uh, that really made my day. Thank you. Thanks everybody. So um, I'll turn it over to Katie or, or uh, Tiffany actually, who's leading the meeting. We'll see where we're at now and I'll just be quiet. If, uh, if you have no more questions, if you guys want to um, email, uh, uh, Allie did put her email in the chat, but we can be sure to send it out to, um, to make sure everybody has it. Um, and you can send her, her photos and she'll put them on the website, did you say? Yeah, I was going to build and, a slide. Put okay, it on. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Jazzy, and, did you uh, find Can I show my? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh wow. wow. Beautiful. Is that the stomach in the middle? Oh. Yeah. Nice. I love it. The stuff so that's pretty. just like red. I put it, if you watch Encanto, it's like, it's like Peppa. Oh, okay. The power is blast water. Oh, cool. Very cool. So in so case much. when I touch it on the stomach, it'll blast water on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Super like nice. a sprinkler. <laughs> I like the colors. Cool. Yeah. Really Excellent. pretty. You guys are so creative. Mm -hmm. Did an awesome job. Um, next month, where there was a, somebody did ask in the chat what next month will be, and um, not sure if anybody's heard, but we have some gray whales hanging around the area, and that's what our topic will be next month. And we'll send out within the next week or so um, the flyer and the announcement. So be sure to register, um, and we promise there'll be a lot of fun, just like. Um, this one. Allie's presentation was great and we're very appreciative to have you, Allie. Um, it was awesome. Um, so if everybody could give her a round of applause. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, but yeah, if there's no more questions, um, I guess we'll just say goodnight to everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming. Hi. 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 Thanks for coming. Hi. Oh, obviously. It's going to like a Patrick's day for tomorrow. This one's the white and candle because it's like Bruno. Uh, it's like Bruno. <laughs> Lots of encanto. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Now I can't I couldn't get on. Right where it should say leave no, boy. the button in the lower right, maybe, or maybe not. It says leave. I'm gonna log off. Bye. Thank Bye. you. For Happy Patrick's Day. Happy you Pat too. <laughs> bye bye. All right, I'm gonna end it, guys. Thanks, okay. Ellie. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. bye.